Hello off-gridders. Today it is pissing with rain outside. It's freezing cold. It's miserable. So I've been beaten indoors and I was checking my notifications on YouTube and I found I had a message from a subscriber asking me about how long does um, it take to boil water on a wood stove. That got me thinking. We had a bit of an email exchange and during that exchange I explained to him the difference between conduction and convection. Now, uh, convection is when the heat travels through the air and conduction is when it travels through the metal itself from one piece to another, like conducting electricity down a wire as opposed to radiating microwave energy through the air or radio waves through the air. I hope you understand that. But the point I wanted to make was that different cookware is made in different ways and some cookware just isn't suitable to be used on a wood stove. Now this cute old copper kettle looks great, I used it for years, but now that I know a little bit more about it I know that having this rib around the bottom lifts the actual base off the top of the cook plate and it slows down its heat transfer whereas the more modern design of the same thing, this one here, they've made a real effort to get the bottom of the pan down again. The lip's still there, but they've brought the pan down sharply around this line here so that most of the bottom is in contact with the metal plate. Okay, so that will boil faster than this one. This thing here is a roasting dish. And a roasting dish is ovenware. It's not designed to be put on the top of certainly a direct flame. If you were to cook using something like this, which is thin metal and has a very small surface area because of the ribbing that's put around it, you would end up burning over a direct flame. Not quite so bad on a stove, although you will still have burning problems. Now the reason that this roasting dish has got the ribs on the bottom is to lift the meat up so that the juices can get underneath and the reason it has the dimples in the top here is so that the juices that have come up inside and condensed on the lid will drip off down onto the meat again self basting the meat so it's usable but it's not perfect now these two pans here, they are designed for the new um, convection cooktops and the, sorry, uh, convection conducting, what are these new ones called? Conduction cooktops, induction, induction, right, the, indu the inductive cooktops, they require also a very flat bottom. Both of these have this flat bottom and they have encapsulated inside the stainless steel a large piece of copper and that copper spreads the heat and gives a nice general heating over the base of the pan. Much like the old cast iron skillets from 50 or 60 years ago but without so much weight. Okay, same effect without so much weight. Now, that's really all I wanted to share. It's a short video, but if it's been informative, please hit the like button because that will help YouTube to bring more videos like this your way so you can learn even more. Um, something else I might just make a mention of. Because it's winter, I'm, cooking, I'm making microgreens every week. I use these greens instead of buying greens, which during the winter are expensive. I just sprout peas and lentils and chop them off and use these greens in my cooking as, and they never even go outside. I've just constantly got a supply of microgreens growing just inside the bathroom window there. So um, there's two tips for the price of one. Hope you enjoyed it. You've been watching Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources. Please subscribe. The button's down there on the right hand side. I would love to see you in the next video. Bye.